is South Africa falling behind if, if we compare ourselves with the technology advances in Australia? And are we going to suffer the consequences, perhaps, of, of not keeping up to this very high technology pace? We have fallen behind, and we are behind. You know, there's no doubt that a lot of the initiatives that the mining industry used to have in uh, yesteryears um, were abandoned because of cost issues. So I think it's by and large been left to the companies to do their own thing. Now, fortunately, the companies have not stood still waiting for uh, industry associations and the like to be uh, put together. Uh, that said, it's good to see that the PAKISA process has got underway. And one of the key legs of Project PAKISA is what we call modernization and mechanization. And I think all the stakeholders now have started to come to terms with the fact that if we're going to survive as an industry, we have to change the way that we mine. And the reason the Australians are now operating trucks from control rooms in Perth is not because it's a nice thing to do, it's actually to survive. They have to re-engineer their businesses to be relevant at prices that are a third of what they were at the peak. So we're going to have to do the same. If you look at uh, the bulk of our platinum and gold resources, we have to find a different way to mine them. Expecting us to mine them conventionally over the next 30 years or so uh, is not going to be a viable proposition. So we have to evolve. The world around us is evolving. Yes, we are late, but thank goodness companies themselves have started doing things. And thank goodness that we've got you know, things like uh, PAKISA and other initiatives now through the Chamber of Mines. Um, it's not enough yet, but it's a start. Are you yourselves in Australia, are you going the same route in Australia? We are. We're already starting to use a lot of these things like the, uh, the sensors underground on the trucks, you know, the drones that can do the um, airborne surveys much quicker and over a wider circumference. We're operating remote loaders underground and we're tuning in to how we can get up to speed with what uh, the suppliers are going to be giving in terms of uh, driverless trucks underground. I'm very excited about the, uh, all of the data and analytics software packages that can be used that can give us a lot more information. Now we can take visual images and capture them and uh, interpret the data and uh, formulate different ways of attacking all bodies quicker. We're going to work out between the four regions in gold fields, South Africa, Australia, West Africa and South America, how we can actually collaborate together and um, first of all just deploy what's out there off the shelf. We don't want to be at the leading end of R&D. We don't need to be. There's a lot going on. Partner with the technology companies, the IT companies, who can help you to gather all the vast amounts of data and put it into sensible um, information and knowledge that's useful for the business. That's another big pillar. We're working with a company called Sias Technologies in South Africa. There's three things they're doing for us on South Deep which I think is going to make a big difference. Um, first of all, they are doing simulation for us. The second thing you can do is by capturing all of the data in the mine to the lowest level, we can do what-if scenarios. We can work out where are the bottlenecks, where are the constraints, where are the opportunities. If you can take the data to the lowest level, you can do all of that. Science is building models that do exactly that for us. But the last one, which I think is the most exciting, is a visualization model. We're going to build a 3D model of the mine that shows you where the mine is, where it's been, and where it's going. You can go on an underground tour sitting in this boardroom where you can actually see yourself going down the haulages. You can look around. You can see the de-stress cut. You can see the open stub. You can look up. You can see the hanging wall. You'll be able to do that. I think that'll be a great training tool for our employees, uh, management, <laughs> uh, the board, the market, everything. So that's going to really change things. And uh, that'll make the control room much more important in the process. There's a whole dynamic about how you train your people. You have to retool, reskill, retrain your people. And South Africa needs to get on this bus. Now, the bus is starting to move. You know, before it picks up too much speed, we better jump on. What's the impact on jobs? There's going to be an impact. But if we don't do something different, there's going to be a much bigger impact on jobs, right? 
So if we can create economic value, we can create jobs in different guises, in different forms. I think that's the, the best way to answer it. But if we're going to cling to very labor-intensive, um, handheld mining we've been practicing for 50 to 80 years, uh, the industry is doomed.